Welcome to Cooking Like Ramos. Today we've got something really cool and different. I'm going to be teaming up with my friend Carl, who's my neighbour. Carl is a photographer, you should check his Instagram and Facebook out. It's called Wave Slider. And he does photography, which is all based in the sea, but not just that, he does some amazing sunsets. His photography skills are unbelievable. But today I'm going to be doing a dish which we can take up to the most insane view in our area. This view actually features in one of the Avenger films which is the most insanely beautiful uh, landscape in the south of England. I won't tell you right now where it is, but I'll leave that for later. The dish I'm going to be doing, I want to make something that's quite easy to take over, that I can wrap up, uh, and that's going to taste absolutely amazing. And that's quite simple to make. So the dish I'm going to make for you is going to be a Portuguese style curried rice with chicken, chorizo, got loads of different spices. So follow me, I'm going to show you the ingredients. What we've got today is two chicken legs and two chicken thighs, some chorizo, paprika, mild madras powder, we've got oregano, some basmati rice I'm using today, salt and pepper, we've got some garlic, red onion, one tomato and some bell peppers and of course some Portuguese olive oil. Time to prep. So to start off this dish, really simple as always, we're going to go in with some olive oil, two to three tablespoons. Going to go in with some salt first of all, into the pan. You can see that sizzling a little bit, that's exactly what you want to see. What we're going to do is we're going to try and brown the chicken meat first, okay? Right, so I'm going to go in with the chicken, hear that, that's exactly what you want to hear. The reason you want to brown the meat first is to enhance the flavour of the dish. If you don't do this bit, you're kind of going to boil it, so you want to essentially sear the meat first. You want to set the pan at a medium-high heat. So for that to brown, it's going to take around four minutes on each side. You don't want it too hot, so then it will overcook the meat, um, but the meat will still be raw on the inside. You don't want that. Let's just give the meat a little check. See that? It's getting there. A little bit longer. Right. I'm going to have a look and see where we are. About now you can start turning the chicken over. Let's go in with your black pepper. Yeah, I'm just going to give that chicken a little check. Cooking nicely, looking good. Really important to keep on checking your food to make sure it's not burning. And you may, again, you may need to adjust the heat a little bit. You see this brownness here? That is flavour that you're building with this dish. That's exactly what you want. So when you integrate the rice and all the other ingredients, it's going to optimise the flavour of the dish. Turn this chicken around, let's cook from that side. Again, I'm going to use that chicken, the other chicken to chop it up. Meanwhile, I'm going to check this one. You see that going nice and brown? I'm going to check this one. See that? Nice and brown. Exactly what you're looking for. If you want, you can also use chicken breast. You can just dice it up into little cubes and you would follow the same sort of process. But just bear in mind if you cut chicken breast that it will cook a lot quicker than this. So you don't want to leave it as long for searing. At this stage, I'm just going to turn the heat down a little bit and I'm going to go in with the peppers. So here we have the peppers and simply Add them in. I'm just going to turn the chicken round so the skin's facing up. Now, as I said, you're just now building the layers of flavour. And the smell now really starts coming through. Now you want to increase your heat slightly. Not too high. 
Once you've added the peppers, you want to cook that for around two minutes or so, um, so they can release some of their juices and some of the flavour starts integrated into the dish. So it's been a couple of minutes, I'm going to go in with the chorizo. Now the chorizo is going to start releasing some of its oils. Chorizo typically has a lot of paprika in it, so the flavour is just going to be unbelievable. And obviously some of the fat from the actual meat of the pork that they use to make the chorizo is going to integrate to that dish, which is just going to build that layer of flavour even more. This is going to taste amazing, believe me. Once the chorizo is in, cook it for around one to two minutes. Just let some of the oils release um, before adding the onion and garlic. So you can see some of the oils there from the chorizo and that's what's going to add so much flavour. Right, it's been a couple of minutes now. I'm going to go in with the onion and then following, I'm going to let the onion cook for around 30 seconds to a minute and I'm going to add the garlic. Make sure it's all mixing well together. Look at the colour of that chicken. Colour means flavour. So I've added the onion, it's been around 30 seconds. I'm going to go in with the garlic. Carl, I hope you enjoy this. Now, at this stage, we've added the garlic. Let's heat up in the kettle around 500ml of water. You won't need 500ml but you may want to top it up now and again, so it's good to have a little bit extra water, just in case the rice hasn't cooked all the way through. Time to go in with the tomatoes. Now, the reason you want to leave the tomatoes right to the end, really, is you want to leave some of, a bit of bite to them. You don't want to, you don't want them to mush up too much. Cook the tomatoes through for around 30 seconds or so. Right, so got my water ready. Add a little bit first into the dish. We'll top it up enough to cover the rice. I've added water, but if you want to, you can use chicken stock. Um, that would work really well as well. At this stage, you haven't added the rice, so you just want to give that all a wiggle. What you're doing there is you're releasing flavour. Now, I haven't added any spices, and look at the colour of that already. I'm going to slightly increase the heat now. As you can see, it's not a bubble, so we just want to get that to a heat, and you can tell by the bubbles forming over here. Meanwhile, teaspoon of madras powder, go in there, around half a teaspoon of uh, paprika, you don't want to add too much paprika because the chorizo already has some, and a real good pinch of oregano. You could also add bay leaf, I was going to add some but I ran out, sorry, but add a bay leaf if you've got it. Now just give that a good stir and you can see the colour from the madras powder that this is already taking. And the smell of this is unbelievable. Right, water's up to a boil now. I'm gonna go in with the rice. Spread it all round. Make sure it's all under the water. Now, you've added the water. You've added the spices, it's bubbling away. Put that down to a gentle simmer and cook that for around 20 to 25 minutes, okay? Right, we're around 10 minutes in. Come and have a look at these amazing colors. See the color of the, the rot that the rice is taking. It's looking absolutely stunning. With this dish as well, you could add peas if you wanted to. Just, I'd probably add them in at sort of five minutes towards the end. If you come right close, you can see the water going slowly going lower and lower and lower but it's still got water remaining and all that vapour is still cooking the rice above so you want to keep on letting that cook but you want to use the sound because when it starts crackling you know that it's cooking from underneath and that will potentially cook it to a point where it's crispy but if you go over that then it could become burnt so you've got to mind out use your nose smell it and your hearing right we're nearly there so come come and have a look this is a really good indication that your rice is cooked. So you can see it's all become separate and fluffy. Perfectly cooked right now. Shall I go in for a taste? Shall I? Yeah. 
Right. Yeah, man, that's the one. It's pretty much done. I'm gonna turn the heat off. I'm gonna get some aluminium foil, I'm gonna cover it, and I'm gonna leave it to rest for five minutes. So as you can see, you can wrap that up, put a cloth over it, put it in a bag, and you can take it with you if you're going out on a nice picnic. Why do you have to buy you know, um, rubbish food that's not gonna be great for you, where you can make something like this in around 20 to 30 minutes. It's gonna taste absolutely amazing. In Portugal, when we're, whenever we go for a picnic, this is what people do. They, they cook massive stew, Portuguese style stews, uh, paia style rices, chicken, loads of different varieties of food. And you eat really well and you, you have a nice drink and you celebrate. Life's all about celebrating. Right, a delicious meal like this needs an amazing location to eat it at. Follow me. Look at this shape of the bin. <laughs> On the bin. <sighs> Seriously, look at this epic view. This is the dish. This is just an easy, simple thing that you can take on a picnic with your with your family and something so easy and simple to do. And you can actually enjoy some amazing food instead of buying store-bought crap that doesn't taste very good. This isn't gonna go to waste. Carl and I are about to eat this. Again, if you haven't checked out Carl's page, Carl has a Facebook and Instagram page called Wave Slider.